1992's Andro Dunos by Visco was a game we never would have expected to get a full-on sequel so far down the line, but the 2020s have been all kinds of weird, so why not? Developed by the excellent Pickerin Soft, ported to various consoles by Josh Prod, and published by Studio Storybird and Pixelheart, Andro Dunos 2 would see release on March 24th, 2022. Many versions exist, including the typical Switch, PlayStation, Xbox, and PC digital editions, with a bevy of physical standard and special editions available. But a couple of very interesting platforms are also getting it, the 3DS in both NTSC and PAL regions, as well as the venerable Dreamcast. We went ahead and grabbed the Switch version though, so let's take a closer look. The original Andro Dunos on Neo Geo is often criticized for being a rather generic shooting game, but we feel that's maybe just a little harsh. After all, it boasted all kinds of neat features for the time of its release, all of which make a return in Andro Dunos 2 in some form or another. Players move their ship around the screen with typical 8-way control, with movement occurring at a fixed rate. There's no option to change the speed of the player's craft, something rather uncharacteristic of most modern shooting games. Thankfully, the movement rate here is solid, allowing players to travel around the screen and dodge enemy shots without feeling too sluggish or too speedy. Fire is rapid and handled by the A button by default. Four different weapon types are available to the player right on the outset of the game and can be scrolled through by pressing either the L or R buttons. Each of these weapons can be powered up through seven levels by way of shot power items dropped from item carrier enemies. Players should be careful though. If a life is lost, the weapon players are using will lose some of its power, requiring additional pickups to regain their strength. Thankfully, newer players can set the difficulty to Journey, where weapon strength is not reduced on death. Missile items can also be obtained to enable and upgrade an additional layer of offensive power to the player's arsenal, and each weapon has a unique missile type. Missile shots are also tied to the player's main weapon input. The same goes for a defensive bit formation represented with a U item. Each weapon system has a dedicated defense formation that can assist in protecting the player from various bullets, though lasers are still deadly. Of course, it goes a little further. Along the way, various orbs will appear that can be collected for score, which we'll talk about in a little more detail soon. These orbs are tallied at the bottom of the screen. Small ones are worth one, while large ones count for three. At the end of any given stage, the player is awarded with upgrade points for every 10 collected out of a possible 30. These points can then be used to power up any of the player's weapons, their missiles, their defensive bits, or applied as a score bonus. Depending on their playstyle, players have a huge amount of flexibility in this regard. Finally, a hypershot can be deployed by pressing the B button, which overdrives the selected weapon the player happens to be using at the time. Depending on the hypershot used, bullets can also be cancelled in addition to dealing huge damage. As such, these powerful attacks are super helpful for crowd control and dealing huge damage to bosses. Unlike the original Androdunos, the player's weapon power will not be reduced if the hypershot is deployed, but a cooldown will also start once the hyper finishes. While the cooldown is in play, the weapon used will default to its basic power until it concludes. Thankfully, players can switch to a weapon that has more power behind it while the cooldown is in play. These simple yet satisfying mechanics give Androdunos 2 a very flexible game style that players of a wide range of skills should be able to appreciate, and it's a pretty fun time in the end. Played over the course of seven stages, learning the ins and outs of each area and what weapons are best used makes for a rather engaging time, even if outside of this experimentation and opening a small handful of new game modes, there's comparatively little replay value. Its lack of two-player co-op, something prominently featured in the Neo Geo original, compounds this. What's here is super solid though, and fun to boot. The gameplay is generally very tight as well, even on the Switch. With its balanced challenge, newcomers and veterans should have a good time with this one despite there only being three difficulty options. There was also no discernible input delay. Without using any fancy-tancy tools that we don't actually have anyways, if it is present, we don't really feel it. One thing we did notice though was the very limited control options. Players can't simply assign any button to any function. Only the presets available can be chosen, which can be iffy when using a stick. Still, all in all, Androdunos 2 works, and it works well. There's a ton of 90s shooting DNA here, and Pickerinsoft really encapsulated the Androdunos experience, while also making it more approachable and playable. We can't wait to see how it fares on the Dreamcast, but really, any version is going to be a blast to play. The score system in Androdonos 2 is simple enough. Firstly, enemy destruction will give the player points. Duh. 
When in the middle of a stage, players also obtain bonuses for collecting those blue orbs we talked about earlier. Small ones are worth 500 points and large ones 2,000. Nice. More on this in a second though. Similarly to a great many other shooters, collecting power-up items, be it for the player's main shots or missiles, will grant an extra 2,000 points when at maximum power. Solid. And finally, the collected blue orbs that are found at the bottom of the screen will contribute to a sizable bonus at stage end. With each worth 1,000 points, up to 30,000 points can be applied to the player's score when tallied up. As is typically the case, Extends and Androdunos 2 are dependent on score, so the higher the better. Interestingly, the player's score is not wiped when a continue is used, which is great for capturing footage but lousy for competing against other players. So whether the player gets a 1cc or uses 9 credits, the score might end up being the same. Of course, there are also no online leaderboards, so snagging a screenshot is essentially all players will have when comparing themselves to others around the world. To be honest, online leaderboards really are a must for these kinds of games in today's day and age. The lack of any kind of online competitive modes really restricts the overall staying power and replayability for a shooter in general. And while most might not mind their absence, we are a little disappointed that we can't scope out where we sit on the global side of things. The presentation behind Andronudos 2 is unsurprisingly very good. Pickerin Soft has come up with some pretty great games in the past, not the least of which include the excellent Battlecrust and Infinos Gaiden. It's little wonder that some of our viewers quipped that Andronudos 2 looked more than a little like a reskin of Infinos on our livestream. The visuals here are indeed great, with slick staged title cards, all kinds of parallax, a good amount of detail, cool effects, and, something we really appreciate, shadows that only appear on close objects and not also the sky. Even Eskatos was bad for that with its explosions. Androdunos 2 also features a great attract sequence, a staple of every great arcade title. Neat. However, as decent as the visuals turned out, there are some issues. A number of sprites have weird glitchy pixels or masking issues or something. Allegedly, this only affects the console ports and not PC. It's also said that there's a fix, but complications are preventing them from being applied, according to Picker and Soft. That's troubling. Hopefully the fixes can be applied in an expeditious manner. On the sound front, Androdunos 2 features a wicked synthwave and electronic soundtrack that features banger after banger, though the odd track left a bit to be desired. Unlike the original, it definitely has a more European flavor. Despite this, there are throwback BGM selections that are drawn from the original Androdunos as well. Likewise, the sound effects at play here are all rather good with none irritating or annoying us. Always a plus. Rounding out the presentation is a simple menu system, simple control options, a simple wallpaper in the borders, and a decent Neo Geo style tutorial sequence. So how does Androdunos 2 stack up? Let's take a look. The controls in Androdunos 2 are as sharp and responsive as you'd want out of a modern shooting game. Button remapping might be too limited though. On the whole, the challenge in Androdunos 2 is rather well balanced between its three difficulties. With seven stages and extra unlockable modes, Androdunos 2 has a decent core length. However, its staying power might be reduced thanks to its lack of online features and two-player co-op. Generally speaking, Androdunos 2's visuals are pretty great, but the Switch version we played exhibited some nasty artifacting. The audio is also pretty amazing, even if some of the tracks are less than stellar. Great sound effects throughout, though. Androdunos 2 does great things with the original game's formula, making it much more approachable. However, its lack of online features and removal of two-player co-op tilts its ingenuity back. 25 bucks gives Androdunos 2 a low price, with a decidedly great value thanks to its fun gameplay. Yes, it would have been better with online features and co-op, but what's here is still well worth its price. In the end, Androdunos 2 is as solid a shooter as we could have hoped. Pickerin Soft does it again with what is easily one of the better shmups we've played this year so far, despite the minor issues we had. When the chips are down, Androdunos 2 comes highly recommended. You can get a copy of Androdunos 2 digitally and physically on a variety of platforms. Links below. We can't wait to play this one on Dreamcast, but until such a time, we have all kinds of other shooting games to scope out. An indie redux, a classic bullet hell, a swath of titles we've admittedly fallen behind with, and a huge 10 plus 2 release super project. It's all coming soon on Bullet Heaven. We'll see you all in the next episode.